The opinions, viewpoints, and beliefs presented on this program do not necessarily reflect those of the management, the affiliates, and broadcast partners, or the sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Scarefest Radio, the radio you can see. And hello, everyone, and welcome to Scarefest Television Date. The date, <laughs> I'm already messed up. Today's date is November 13th, Friday the 13th, 2020. What could go wrong? And of course, we've already found out. But we got everything, we got everything cooking now. We got everything cooking now. Our guest tonight is the lovely, and I will say talented, Christina Kleeb. And I'm going to say that because I have watched just damn near every movie that she has streaming on, uh, on, uh, Amazon Prime right now, so just throwing that out there to get a little pat on the back. Um, and of course, my co-host, the also lovely and talented CC Ann. Hello, CC. I feel like it's been forever since you've uh, hosted. I know. Did you miss me? A little bit, a little bit. But uh, <laughs> but you notice tonight, what we're doing is we're doing this whole theme because if I figure if I I surround myself with enough beautiful women, the ratings will go up. And yes, that's, that's, nothing nothing bad can happen on Friday the 13th when you're surrounded by ladies, right? Nothing, no, nothing at all. When you're surrounded by, you know, I was Jenny Myers in the Friday the 13th game, so I'm, I know how to, you know, survive sometimes, Jason. <laughs> sometimes yeah. is the key word. <laughs> and oh, but, and one, but one more. Th- better than no time, so. One more thing, yes, it is week two of No Shave November. Um. <laughs> now we're, we're going to go ahead and get to it. Uh, first of all, Christina, you were the first person I, in, I invited on the new iteration of Scarefest TV. And the oh. reason was I felt like such a shit ball for your experience at CyberCon. Uh, <laughs> you did CyberCon for us. Did, what did you get on like 30 minutes of actual uh, camera time? That was the craziest thing. I mean, I actually was really excited about it because I thought it was the best idea ever because who wants to do an in-person con right now? I mean, I know people are doing them, but it's not for me (laughs) right now. (laughs) Also, I live with my parents, so like, it's just not an option, you know? So um, I thought it was a great idea and I don't know what happened. Like I, I tried three different, I tried two different computers and my phone and none of it worked. Yeah, but you had like a house full of Macintoshes, didn't you? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Apple. 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 App, that. The rule on Apple products is if you download anything, if you try to use anything anywhere that is not an Apple product with an Apple product, you're just you're you're begging you're begging for for a disaster. That's that's what yeah. I, I tell I tell Brandon Griffith. I tell everybody. I'm not saying they're not wonderful devices. If you stay on the rails, if you stay you know in the little I box. Get, I should just get a Microsoft, like um, some, you know, just one to use. Because, I mean, they're the you know, apples are so expensive. You only buy one every, like, you know, six, seven years anyway. Um, and so I should just buy a cheaper Microsoft one to mm-hmm. use for certain situations. Um, and, you know. You know, I need to look into the, the they're practically giving away these damn Chromebooks nowadays. I need to see if the the webcams work oh. and everything. The Chromebooks are yeah, like they're like two hundred bucks. Yeah, and, something you know, like that. Exactly. They're like they're like disposable. But um, anyway, okay, <laughs> en- enough of that. Uh, as I was saying, I went into this interview full throttle. And by the way, you've cost me more than most of my guests because I actually had to rent two of your movies. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> so sorry. I mean, no, I mean, I'm thankful because, but most of the time, I don't even know where that money goes. It doesn't necessarily go to me. So, um, uh, obviously, you know. Oh, well, I, I can imagine because, you know, a bazillion people watching yeah. it and then, you know, my, my little $3 or whatever the hell it was. But, okay, we're going to start with Halloween. 
Uh, now, I did actually do the math here, and when you did Halloween in 2007, now, of course, I guess you filmed it a year, maybe even a year before, but you, sh I, my math shows you were about 18 years old. Uh, you know, I mean, why not let people continue to guess how old I was when I shot <laughs> Well, I got your birth date off IMDb. If it's wrong, it's wrong. No, I mean, I, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to stay away from the dirty old man thing. Uh, when I had a, I had another guest on here and found out she was, was a little 19. bit older than eighteen. You but, were a little uh, bit older than eighteen. But Scout turned eighteen on on set, and um, and and Scout is younger than I am. So, huh. well, I don't care <laughs> how old you are. I actually, I really don't care. Well, um, you know what? Honestly, I don't either. I love. I always said I was going to be so excited as I got older in my life. Um, but the problem is Hollywood cares a lot about how old you are. Um, and they don't seem to make be able to differentiate between like your age and what you can or cannot play, you know? It's very I strange. guess I can see that, but now I'm gonna tell you on watching your movies. Whoops. On watching your movies, I I have seen some real quality stuff, if you will. Um one of my fate now this one i'm surprised i'd never heard of it because i thought the movie actually it kind of rocked really uh i am fear that was a very very well done movie it started out i knew it said horror but i'm watching the first part i'm like okay yeah it's a lot of blood and guts but this isn't a horror movie and then at the end of the movie yes spoiler alert christina klebe fucking kills everybody just <laughs> i'm not even going to tell you how or why i'm just going to tell you this shit hits a fan late in the movie uh that was i actually i was actually surprised i guess that one went straight to dvd or straight to video that was a theatrical quality movie I, I mean, I totally agree. And I also helped produce it and I helped cast it and I um, I feel very strongly about it. Um, I had a lot, you know, of input in that movie and I I agree. I mean, it, it was strangely, I think one unfortunate, an unfortunate coincidence and I promised you I wouldn't talk about politics but this isn't <laughs> about really politics right now. It's about when we were making the movie um, the script had the short film had been made by Kevin Schulman many many years ago and I had seen it and thought it was really cool and amazing and it was and then we worked on the script but then in 2016 when Trump won he started going against the media right and that was like this big thing but this script had been written way before that and it was kind of about how and this is absolutely true media is created on making people be fearful because if they i mean th it depends what media and you know when you go to europe you can find some outlets that are not like that but basically advertising you have to sell advertising on networks right so no matter what like you have to make something interesting to watch like again media can create fear right and so that mm -hmm. was kind of the basis of the film but unfortunately when trump won it became so um weird to make a movie about that because it became like as if we were total trump trump supporters being like look at the media they're evil right but that wasn't the point like we weren't like siding with trump or anybody it wasn't a political movie we were just talking about the media as a source of fear mongering so it was it was it was unfortunate timing that it came out during trump's time because it just there was like too much like people weren't sure what the movie stood for somehow because the people associate this is like everything right now everything has become polarized like right. everything has become political in a way that like you associate it with things that normally it would have never been associated with before like normally before all of this you would have been able to say yeah the media is fear-mongering and that would you could be a democrat or a republican right <laughs> like it wouldn't matter <laughs> Um, and you'd be like, yeah, yeah, they, they can be. Yeah, that's totally true. Some outlets, not as much, some yes, but there are ones that are. Then, you know, same thing with mask wearing. Like, when did that become political? I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? Like stuff like that you would never imagine would be political. It kind of affected that film's release, I think. In my I, 
the old might see now I didn't and I'm a conservative, but when I watched it, I didn't take that. I saw the rise of power. So in other words, what you're talking about, but it, to me it was more and and because you threw the whole evil entity thing into it. Spoiler alert. Um, to me, it, it took it took it. In other words, it didn't feel real. In in other words, I kind of kind of separated that. CC over to you. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how to follow up on all that politics, but um, tell me, what have you been doing since COVID hit? You're in New York. New York is like an epicenter of COVID. What have you been doing? Um, well, thankfully, early on on March 5th, I already got my parents to leave New York City. I knew it was gonna like hit. I mean, New York City is a huge city. People take the subway, people walk, people are, you know. So I, I got them to come up. We've been upstate for, we've had a place here forever because my dad's in radio. So, um, you know, we've always come up here. So we came up here, got away from everything, have not have not gotten COVID hope, yet, hopefully never. <laughs> I, you know, you just don't know. Like I have actually probably, I think I have 20 close friends who've had it. So wow. I, I, I can only say, and, I, and the, the symptoms range from nothing, like literally just losing taste and smell to being in bed for two, oh, actually no, to being in the hospital. I have an, uh, a friend who, an actor who I worked with, I can't, I'm not gonna say who, who is in the hospital for three weeks um, between life and death. So th that's how far the symptoms range. It's, it's just been crazy. Um, so I don't know, you just don't know the way it's gonna affect you. So I prefer to stay away from it. And it sounds like though, even though this is going on with your professional career, you have stayed busy. You have kind of gone behind the screen now and are doing some voiceovers. Yes, yeah. So I was always doing voiceovers, but this actually forced me to concentrate 100% on voiceover, which has been super exciting. Like I built um, a voiceover studio in my basement here, hand built it. I literally had one person help me. Um, I put together all the plans for it. I got all the materials. I built a lot of it by hand. So that was like the most satisfying project I've done in a long time. I love stuff like that. I love building. I love, you know, creating stuff by hand, you know, um, and, and uh, so, yeah, now I'm, I, I did two video games um, in this time. One of them just came out today. Uh oh, it's a kind of well-known game. You might know it. It's called Call of Duty. I don't think anybody doesn't know that game. <laughs> so uh, that's, it's super exciting. I, I have to, I have yet to play it because I don't have a PS4 here, but um, I hope everybody plays it. And if you have, if I'm the German, op I'm one of the operators. So like, you know, when you're playing the game, you hear somebody say like, like Alpha, Bravo down, Charlie, go get Char, I don't know what the, you know, I, I said so many lines that I don't remember any of them. Um, so if you play Call of Duty and you hear a German voice, voice of God, it's me. That's you. You're <laughs> the, the voice, voice of God. God. I love yeah. that. <laughs> Female voice of God. Well, as it should be. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, so that's, it just came out today. So I'm sure people are just starting to get into it and um, it's just super cool because I haven't been able to talk about it for like nine or 10 months or 11 months. So, super well, that's cool. exciting. That's exciting. And we're coming up to our first commercial break, Wes. Everybody you're watching Scarefest Television. We'll be right back with more from Christina Klebe. <laughs> Spirit Mechanics is here to help. Their background includes many different specialties across the metaphysical spectrum, including alchemy, shamanism, Celtic witchcraft, angelic magic, astral travel, and more. With over 30 years combined experience in the group, you can be confident in their ability to help. If there is a question you have that you cannot answer, they will do their best to assist you. Metaphysics can be intimidating, confusing, and unfortunately, abused. Spirit Mechanics takes pride in being selfless in the pursuit of helping others, being humble and honest with their clients about their questions, and lastly maintaining a professional and personable atmosphere. They want you to feel as you are coming to a close friend and they will do everything in their power to make you comfortable and safe.
Hey, Scarefest fans, this is Joe Lewis of Bonehead Weekly. We have Veterans Day the other day, and I was trying to think of something to connect to it. And I do review horror films for Scarefest Television. If I have a recommendation this week, it's for you to get on Netflix and watch The Queen's Gambit. But I'm here to review horror films. Now, thinking about military horror films, I started thinking about, oh, good one a few years ago that I really liked that no one else watched. And it's from producer J.J. Abrams. He didn't direct it. It's called, it's called Overlord. It's directed by Julius Avery and Billy Ray is one of the, not Billy Ray Cyrus, but Billy Ray the writer. And it's these World War II badasses who have to go to a German castle and they're trying to stop this thing. Actually, it stars Kurt Russell's son, Wyatt Russell. I really enjoyed it. This movie is a lot of fun. It came out at Thanksgiving. I mean, it's called Overlord and it's got Nazi zombies in it. And they released this on Thanksgiving weekend a few years ago. I didn't get to see it till it came out on Blu-ray. Highly recommend this, and it has all the World War II stuff in it you'd like. However, there's another movie I really want to recommend that everybody's forgotten about. It's called The Revenant. Now, I am not talking about the Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio film of a few years ago that he won Best Actor for. No. I'm talking about a different Revenant. This Revenant came in 2009. It played at Chad James, you know, Bonehead Weekly. My friends and I have a Halloween party, except for this year. Every year where we watch a bunch of horror films, and we always try to make find bad ones. And this one was one of those that came out and just, just kind of grabbed us by the balls. It's called The Revenant, like I said. It's directed by Kerry Pryor. He'd worked in special makeup of, or special effects throughout. He's actually worked on Nightmare on M Street 3. He hasn't really done anything that I've heard of after this. In L.A., a fallen soldier who has joined the ranks of the living dead reunites with his best friend in order to deal with the city's drug dealers and killers, a perfect way to collect the blood that one of them needs desperately. He's killed in Iraq. He's coming back from war and he becomes a zombie. This movie's actually very poignant. It deals with him and his friend, how they relate to one another. It's funny as hell in places. It's a lot of fun, but I don't think a lot of people talk about it. And I'm guessing some of you have never seen it. It deserves so much more credit than it gets. Now, I always get the question of, where can you watch it? Well, the problem is, is actually, this movie's not really easy to find. iTunes has it for $3.99. You may be able to find it at other streaming locations that are free that may be somewhat illegal. Or you may be able just to see what you can find on YouTube. The Revenant, man. It has a great ending. Like I said, I've gotten shit about saying things about endings on here before, but it's a great ending. And it's a lot of fun. And it's stuck with me. I don't think anyone ever talks about it. So if you get the chance, check out The Revenant, directed by Kerry Pryor, okay? This has been Joe Lewis of Bonehead Weekly saying, hello. Oh, yeah, the Overlord's a lot of fun. Overlord is on Amazon. You, It's easy to find. The Revenant, not so, not so easy. But it's worth it. Go out there. Tell them Joe sent you. And welcome back, everybody. We're going to do a few announcements real here real quick. Um, in case you haven't heard, Scarefest CyberCon has been, for the November edition, has been postponed. We tried to throw it together too quickly. We didn't allow ourselves enough time, and that just did not work out. We were not doing it justice. We were not going to have it to the standards that we wanted. So we've moved it to January 9th. Uh, the New Year's edition of CyberCon will be January 9th. Uh, we're going to do everything we did last time, only we're going to do it better. And this time, we're, and now we should have actual time to uh, to get it right. I want to show you and guys buttons. Speaking of which, the, uh, <laughs> the, the um, film festival. We're doing a film festival for CyberCon. Um, it went over really well for the first one we did. We had some great submissions. So... Uh, go to the CyberCon Facebook page and you'll find out exactly what we're looking for, but it essentially 30 minutes or less. Email your submissions to ScarefestRadio at gmail.com Don't forget the Central Kentucky Mystical Market. Now it's scheduled for December 12th and 13th, but we are coming to you from deep within the red zone. So that means uh, watch uh, CentralKentuckyMysticalMarket.com 
I'm going to tell you I, that nothing's been said, but I am afraid it will be canceled. So watch, watch and make sure that we actually do get to have it. If the numbers don't come down, I don't see it happening. Um, tonight, after the show, 10 p.m., if you go to our Patreon page, that is patreon.com slash scarefest radio you can still join and hop in tonight with us on our zoom meeting with christina Kleeb. she'll be doing a q a session for as long as uh she'll put up with this and we have nice original questions i'm sure but the after party you do have to be a patreon subscriber to get in and finally i want to remind everybody yes next week is a premiere of jake hates everything jake hates everything jake godbold will be joining me on air and we're going to discuss a couple of movies he's come up with a neat concept he's going to shoot me two movies two horror movies and i have to and one he likes one he hates and he i have to guess which one so we're going to be discussing a couple of movies and that's what's going on okay now i've got um go to me i got one question well not me me Oh, we're figuring it out. <laughs> we, we, CC messed up our Zoom meeting. There you go. Uh, uh, beforehand, uh, just go over to it. Well, no, it says co host on it. Yeah, we're all messed up here. Um, this is just, why we do not use Zoom, incidentally, for the um, show. I know. I think Skype this is another, I guess, this might, must be another Apple issue that I can't download Skype onto my new computer. Does um, Skype work on new Apples or like? I mean, that's crazy. It's hard to tell. Hard to tell. The um, Now, well, anyway, I'll, I'll go ahead and ask the question. There you, you, do that. It doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> Where are we? Are we oh, there we go. Now we can, at least we can see everybody now. We can see everybody now. Um, here is, um, the, the, I got a quick question for you. Um, you have no accent. Your parents, however, are from all over the place. Um. So I am beginning to think that accents come from uh, nature and not nature. Would you agree with that? <laughs> yes. I, uh, I mean, uh, so what's funny and weird is that I didn't speak at all until I was like two years old. And my parents thought that maybe I had a problem. <laughs> um, but when I spoke, I spoke English and German at the same time right away because they spoke German and English to me. So I think I was completely confused for a little bit and my brain was processing. But then when I started to speak, I spoke both languages and both of them without an accent. So I, I think actually like what's, fa I mean, I think that's what you should always do. I mean, if I don't have kids, but I'm like, if I had kids, I would get one person to talk one language to them if somebody spoke another language. And then, you know, because their brains are like, they pick up things. Oh, you have a cat too. Here, yes, yeah, <laughs> I saw yours. Let me find my weird button. Oh, she's. And tonight on Wild Kingdom. <laughs> Here's oh my God! Look, at me. Look, they can be friends. They can be Zoom friends. <laughs> she's super pissed at me. Oh, button. She's like also dissolving into Dolph Lundgren. Um, so I mean, I think. Um, you know, and, and what's interesting is when I go and I work in Germany, I really have to make sure, because I live in America, that I don't have any kind of a remnant of an American accent in German. Because obviously, because I grew up here, I don't really have an accent, but sometimes weird words come out of my mouth, like, because my parents had phrases that weren't really English, right? They like. <laughs> You know, so sometimes if you know me well enough, like I'll say weird things and you'll be like, whoa, like, what does that mean? And I'm like, wait, that's, isn't that the way you express that? You know, I don't know. I mean, then again, I studied English and I went, you know, I did well in school. So I really studied hard. It's not like I, you know, but language is weird. I don't know. It's like, you know, some, it's um, intonation, it's phrases, it's more than just probably the accent, you know, it's, it's, um, I don't know, it's lots of things, but I'm grateful that I speak more than one language. <laughs> yeah, and like you said, kids are a sponge at that age, so absolutely. Now tell me, Christina, you've been in a lot of, you've been in a lot of stuff, you've been in a lot of movies, you've been in a lot of TV shows, you've got these video games, um, I mean, you obviously stay very busy. I have to ask, what is what is your favorite project you've ever done? Um, 
That is a great question. <laughs> I feel like I'm either going to like upset somebody or make somebody really happy with this answer. Um, uh, I have to think. So honestly, one of my favorite things up to date it has been working on Call of Duty. And the reason is because obviously it was during the pandemic and I was so grateful to be working, but also the people that I was working with were so freaking cool. <laughs> like, I mean, I just can't describe the, the way that voiceover people are is so different. Like they're just freaking chill and cool. And, and, and yet really like they've got their shit together. They know exactly what they want, exactly what they need. Everything's organized, you know, but then they also like let leave time to kind of chat and for like a couple minutes and have fun. And then um, so I don't know. I loved everybody I worked with on Call of Duty, and it was just such an honor to be a part of it. But um, I mean, obviously, Halloween was incredible. It was such an honor. I was just an incredible way to be introduced into the horror genre. Um, I I'm trying to think of, like what else was like. So I loved working on Proxy with Zach Parker. Zach mm -hmm. Parker is an incredible director who should be doing like everything. Um, and um, I mean, I've had great experiences. I've loved working in Serbia and in, 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 um, in Montenegro with Milan Todorovic. Um, I've had a, I don't know, I've had a great time on German TV sets like with, um, with Thomas Jan for the TV show I did in Germany, Professor T. Um, I've had some really great times and, and working with Neil Marshall and you know, um, has, was always great. I've worked with him twice. I know he, you know, like he's, he's a great guy and um, has always been a great experience working with him, super chill and fun. And so I've worked with very few women, which is very sad, I find. Um, and there was a movie I had a very, very tiny part on um, recently with uh, uh, Natasha Kermani, a movie called Lucky. Um, so I, I'd love to work with women more. I mean, I hope it would be as much fun. Like, why not, right? I mean, it shouldn't be a difference in um, in gender, but I find it weird that I'm never cast by female directors. <laughs> That's interesting. And you were, you were in Tales of Halloween. That's one of my favorites. And it was on for Halloween, which just passed greatest holiday ever. Um, and I just love the part that you're in with the bad scene. That was Neil Marshall. So Neil Marshall directed that and he's amazing and he's a great guy. And, um, you know, so, so I hope he keeps on doing his thing. And tell me about, you've got this behind you with Dolph Lundgren. Which movie is this? Oh, it's, yeah. Mike Mendez. Hello. Duh. Don't, don't kill it. See, that's the problem is you start saying things and then you're like, oh no, I'm like offending somebody because I didn't mention them. No, we had a great time on the set of don't kill it. That was super fun. We were in Mississippi um Dolph is amazing and we had a very I got cast three days before having to travel down there so I had very very little time to learn the lines I was like learning lines every night I was living in a in a house with the crew so they were like up every night like partying and I'm like they're trying to learn lines before the next day and shooting and I managed to do it somehow so you know and I managed to still have a good time so <laughs> sometimes you wonder how you get it all done, but we do it. And, um, and uh, yeah, there's so many great experiences. I love, I mean, I can't say anything bad about anybody that I've worked with really. I mean, I could, but I won't. Well, I, and if you could, you wouldn't, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, especially after working with Wes and I, right, Wes? <laughs> No, I wouldn't. I, that's not my, that's not my ammo. Like I, somebody would really have to do something really bad to me for me to like, actually the truth is I don't remember it. Like I might in the moment complain about something or be like, oh, this is annoying or something, but I literally don't remember it. And it's because I'm like, why would I carry that around with me? Like that kind of feeling. I mean, ultimately my feeling is of gratitude and happiness to be able to work. Right. Like the, the little annoyances are not something you should carry around in life like and gossiping and talking bad about people only hurts you not anybody else absolutely definitely and I have to ask since you're on Scarefest with us what are your thoughts on the paranormal 
Oh, don't even get me started. I actually just got the chills when you said that. I, I'm, I am very, very, very sensitive to all of it. Um, I, I, um, I actually do a lot of like spiritual work be, to, to keep myself in the light because I can get affected by like dark, not dark energies in like a bad, bad way, but I have to make sure I protect myself a lot. Um, it, I was in Savannah, Georgia. I was teaching there. Um, so I was there for like 10 days and I was in a hotel that was super, super haunted. I didn't realize it was at first. Um, but the first thing that happened to me was that I felt a tickling on my leg and I had my hair up. It was not like I had my hair down. It was kind of dirty because I'd been traveling. And I was like, that's so weird. And the next morning I felt it again. And I asked the people who worked at the hotel, I'm like, hey, random question. I know we're in Savannah, Georgia, but is this hotel haunted? And they looked at me and they laughed like I was stupid. They were like, ha, 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 yes. And I was like, every hotel in Savannah is yes. haunted. Well, this one was like a crazy one. If I can't, if I remembered the name, you would know it was a hotel. I mean, it was a hospital in the Civil War. And they said, and I said, well, what's the number one thing that people see? And they said, a little girl that tickles their feet. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, okay. Um, and, and then what happened is because I accepted it and I had experienced it and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Like I experienced the little girl. It got worse and worse every night, like negatively worse in, in, oh. in the sense that actually like my room was so haunted that at night, like around three in the morning, I would be paralyzed with fear. And then like these horrible smells would come into the hotel room. And it was so, so dark that I didn't even want to go to sleep in that hotel room. I almost tried to change the room, but then I was like, oh, I was like, I'll just take a sleeping pill. And then if I die because some spirit kills me, then at least I'll have been asleep with a sleeping pill while it happened. Um, but no, I mean, it was so scary. So I, I have, yes, I and I've seen spirits uh, in like real, like in, I've seen them personified. I, um, yeah, I've had some crazy, crazy experiences, but I don't really, you know, it's like, you don't want to have, have those too many of those experiences because they're super intense. <laughs> so sure. absolutely. Uh, I try to stay with the light and with the angels. I try to stay with Archangel Michael and have him around me. And that's, all I like to have around me on a consistent basis. Fantastic, Wes. <laughs> okay, we're going to take a commercial break. Everybody, we'll be right back with more Christina Klebe. Mama Ruby offers fun vendor-based events that focus primarily on the metaphysical and spiritual aspects of our lives. Well, 2020 didn't go as planned, to say the least. Since Mama Ruby's can't bring the vendors to you in person, they still encourage you to support them online. For links to these and other outstanding artists, craftspeople, vendors, and psychics, visit MamaRubies.com and click shop. Horror. Movie. Fans. Four. Life. Find us. For news. For memes. For life. This week, back in 1984, Wes Craven brought a new nightmare to life with the release of A Nightmare on Elm Street. And with it, audiences were introduced to the horror icon, Freddy Krueger. 
Four teenagers living in a small town in Ohio are being stalked and terrorized in their dreams by a burnt man wearing a glove with razor blades as fingers. One by one, the teenagers are killed in their dreams and reality until only one teen is left to try to fight. A Nightmare on Elm Street was a critical success and helped launch the careers of Robert England and Johnny Depp and is listed as one of the greatest horror movies ever made. Before the sparkly vampires became a thing of fantasies, vampires were seen as mysterious, alluring, and in many cases, sex symbols. And this week, back in 1994, audiences were introduced to two such vampires with the release of Interview with the Vampire. The narrative of this film centers around a centuries-old vampire. Louis, or Louis, I forget, is giving a present-day interview about his life with the vampire who created him, Lestat, who is named after a feminine hygiene product. Interview with the Vampire was the debuted novel by American author Anne Rice, and fans of her work, as well as horror movie fans, loved the movie adaptation, which led the film to widespread success, and it landed the film and actors many awards and accolades. <laughs> And welcome back, everybody, to Scarefest Television. We've been we've we've been getting all kinds of paranormal stories behind the scenes here. Um, now, one movie that you did, Killer Mermaid, uh, which I think the the was that filmed in Italy. It was filmed in Montenegro, actually. Yeah. So, okay. but it looks like Italy. It could be. Well, I knew that was one of the languages you had in in your bag, so I thought it might have because oh, <laughs> yeah. The Franco the Franco unnerving part about it. it was a good movie and it a little, little slow getting all the characters set up but once it got rolling I loved it except watching you because you did that I guess in another language correct no 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 it, Killer and Mermaid I shot in English but everybody else had accents well see it looks dubbed. That was the unnerving part. When I watched it, the the lips did not match. So I thought no. that ever you recorded it in another language, and then you went back and did your actual own voiceover for it. No, where did you watch it? It should not be like that. That's for sure. Uh, was it on Amazon? It was either on Amazon Prime or Shutter, one or the other. It definitely shouldn't look like that. That's crazy. <laughs> no. I'll, I'll, well, I'll, there went my I'll line of questioning. A version of it. Um, that the that the real version no 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 that no we did not do any dubbing on that but everybody had accents because i'm trying to think like i think i was the only american in that movie so everybody else was like from italy or russia or or montenegro or serbia um but that sucks i'm sorry <laughs> that's not the way that you should watch a movie at all well uh, there um, there were there were my entire line of questions anyway oh another fun one Sleigh Bells. Now, how yeah. this slid under my radar, because I love funny horror movies. That's another and, great one, yeah. And that one did not take itself seriously from the first moment it came on the screen. Um, and <laughs> and also, it had a couple of twists in it. It did have a couple of twists in it. Barry Boswick is so amazing in that movie. I love him so much. He, You know what? It's funny. Now, I've always, I've known who he was because of rocky horror okay mm -hmm. and now that i'm watching but i never really paid attention now that i'm watching all these horror movies for research purposes my mm -hmm. netflix is tax deductible <laughs> um, that was mine, that was mine. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he keeps popping up in all these great little roles that i had no idea that he did He's just uh, a work I and mean, he's a working actor. Like that's what's so weird. Sometimes people think like, oh, you know, why are you not more famous? Or why don't I see you in like a blockbuster? Blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, I'm working. It's just that like, you know, some some of us don't make a million dollars every time you make a movie. And we're not like, you know, we didn't have that mo moment of luck that you really have to just have. Like, I mean, it's just all about luck. It's not about talent for sure. <laughs> so <laughs> sorry I no i mean that's i mean so sometimes when you watch people you're like well how did you get that role like i'm not sure but 
I mean, uh, you, ought, you ought to be trying to scrape out an existence as a second rate podcaster. You want tough times. You want tough. T- when I started podcasting, I was, I was a big fish in a little pond and then everybody got podcast. And now I am scrambling so hard to do, try to do things that nobody else are doing yet. And I yeah. guarantee you there are three shows hot on my ass right now that can just yank what little bit of fame away from me. And but at my age, hey, you know, I I can die of a heart attack tomorrow. So what am I worried about? I Cece, think you were the first person, so you got you got that on your side. You know, you got like the experience. <laughs> stuff, you know, he does. I mean, he's Wes. Everybody knows Wes. Everybody loves Wes. Exactly. So don't worry about that. So Everybody- what do you see? What do you see coming up on the horizon for you? Oh, gosh. I mean, I see a lot of COVID on the horizon. (laughs) I don't know how to get rid of that image of like people like I just, I can't. um, I I have auditioned for a couple things like I auditioned for a movie that I hope happens. I'm not sure what's going to happen there when they're going to shoot it. I see honestly, so I'm actually recording an audio book now because I was like, you know, if I'm going to be at home and I built this incredible studio for myself, I better use it for something. So I'm recording my, it's my second audiobook, but the first one that I'm like super excited about, it's an epic fantasy. It's called The Goddess's Choice. Um, the, it's the first book of the um, Chronicles of Corthlundia. And it's kind of like a PG version of Game of Thrones. And it's so cute. And it's actually about this these healers. It's about two healers who are like, one is a princess and the other one is a, like a, a peasant boy. So it's kind of like in the like medieval times, but in a different kind of reality. It's not like something that is historical. And um, it's about like gods and goddesses and um but it's super cool like you know so I'm playing all the characters and it's um going to be supposedly 22 hours and yes so (laughs) I'll let you know in like a year when it's done (laughs) I don't know because it's going to take a lot of time I just started um but it's called the goddess's choice so that's what I'm working on right now and it is, let's say, let's say it's a Friday night and it is a Friday the 13th. What would be a movie you would choose to watch? I, um, so, okay. I did, I am watching The Queen's Gambit. I'm almost finished with it. That's a show. So that doesn't count, I guess. I have been not watching movies as much as shows. It's horrible. I, okay. What would I watch tonight? I, ha- I wanted to watch my friend uh, Bria Grant's movie, 12 Hour Shift. Um, I have not watched it yet, so I, maybe I'll try to catch that, you know, support female filmmakers. Yeah. Um, f- support female filmmaker Fridays. Um, still, again, waiting for to work with a female filmmaker, like <laughs> really work with one, like in a hefty role, but I will still support all of them. Um, and so, yeah, 12 Hour Shift. That's what I'd say. That sounds wonderful. You know, I think it's it's amazing. Horror has been a, a an amazing um, media for for women to to have major roles in for a long period of time. As you know, screen queens um, are are known for horror, but it's really nice to see um, strong independent women now working behind the camera as well. So, have you ever thought about maybe taking um, doing some more of that work yourself? Um, since you are obviously eager to work with women behind the camera, but being the woman behind the camera. If you guys have not seen it, I would suggest you and anybody listening to check out my short film. It's only five minutes long. It's on Alter. It's a that horror streaming site, Alter, A-L-T-E-R. It's uh-huh. called As Human as Animal, and it stars Diamond Dallas Page, the wrestler. DDP. Um, so I shot that a couple years ago and that's running on there on Alter. Again, it's only five minutes. I've directed a couple other shorts, but no, yeah. I mean, I, I wrote my script um, about my own life. Uh, and I mean, not my whole life, but being diagnosed with BRCA2. And I'm hoping to get it made somehow. It's really hard to get money. Every filmmaker's problem, whether you're a man or woman, is to get money, um, for somebody to believe in you, to direct your first feature. Um, so I'm trying really, really hard. I, 
it's weird because COVID put a lot of stuff on hold, right? You know, I, I had good momentum coming in to, to March. And then, you know, it's like, how do you ask mo people for money in this time when everybody's like scraping by, you know? And it's like, I mean, yes, of course there are still, the people that would probably invest in a movie probably are not having a problem anyway, but it's still weird. I'm, I'm not good at asking for money, so. Um. Well, we certainly at Scarefest understand what, you're, what you mean. We've had to, you know, obviously put off our, our Scarefest um, convention in Lexington, yeah. Kentucky this year, which was, you know, sad for everybody, but looking forward to next year. And um, we have other projects going year. on. Go ahead. I hope I can come in next year again. I would love to. Didn't I come like a couple of years ago? Wasn't I? Was I oh, ever I can Google it. Yeah. <laughs> Wes, were you not there a couple of years ago? Honey, I get so busy when I'm there. I don't see. I don't see half the guests. If I don't have them on the show, I, most of the time I don't yeah. know they're there. Because honestly. I think I was there. Well, I was in Lexington, Kentucky once, and I remember I went to visit a bunch of horse farms because I love horses, and it must have been Scarefest because I know. I, I'm sure it was, right? I mean, was there another, I mean, so. Anyway. Uh, there's a big Comic-Con. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think I came to Scarefest, but it was like probably four or five years ago. Um, it, Kane Hodder was there. Yeah, that's definitely Scarefest. <laughs> yeah. He practically has an that's actually how That's how I booked Friday the 13th, the game. Going back to Friday the 13th is because I met the creator, one of the creators there. and That was Scarefest 9. <laughs> I'll be willing. It? I would be willing to bet because that was a year that they were pushing that game, if I remember yep. correctly. And that's and they started talking about it, and I was like, "Well, I really want to audition for it because I I love doing voiceovers. I'd already been doing them, but I was like, I want a chance to do whatever I can. But I'll audition for it." And they sent me, and it was right before they were casting. I, I auditioned for like all the roles, all the female roles, and then they cast me. So that was so thanks to Scarefest, I got Friday the Thirteenth the game. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so, in, in a roundabout way, you know, like that's how things work in life, you know. All right, everybody, we're going to finish out with a, uh, we got some commercials to do. We got still have True Horror coming up. Don't forget, um, after the show, if you go to uh, patreon.com slash scarefest radio, you can continue this lovely conversation in person with Christina Klebe. Christina, I, I will be talking in a few minutes. Okay. Everyone is talking about CBD oil and it seems like almost everyone is using it. The research is ongoing, but the apparent health benefits are overwhelming. If you're going to use CBD products though, what brand should you buy? First, find out where the hemp was grown. Imports are flooding the market. How potent is it? Look for a brand that plainly states its concentration on the label. And look for full spectrum CBD. This means the oil contains CBD and all the other cannabinoids, terpenes, and nutrients that are found in the entire cannabis plant. Look for Blue Leaf CBD oil. Blue Leaf Naturals is a Kentucky proud company. They use only Kentucky-grown hemp, supporting Kentucky farmers and businesses. Visit their website at blueleafcbd.com now and use the code SMILE at checkout for free shipping. TellMeTarot.com Rare tarot and oracle decks for the discerning enthusiast or collector. Odd decks are not for everyone. If you are a rare deck collector, art collector, or simply fall in love with a deck, then we might be for you. Right now, get 10% off your first order just for subscribing to their newsletter. Shipping is just $5.99 in the United States. TellMeTarot.com Coyote Chris Sutton 
shamanism, spiritual advisement, paranormal investigations, inspirational presentations, bringing light to the darkest places for over 20 years. Go to coyotechris.com to learn more. True horrors often inspire art. And this week, back in 1974, in the small town of Amityville, Long Island, Ronald DeFeo Jr. walked into a bar and asked for help, saying his parents had just been shot. When police arrived at his home at 112 Ocean Avenue, they discovered the bodies of his parents as well as his four siblings. All of them had been shot to death. Despite his denial of committing the murders, Ronald was found guilty and sentenced to six life terms. The home on Ocean Avenue was later sold to the Lutz family, who only lived in the home for 28 days before moving out and claiming they had been terrorized by paranormal activity. Those claims, along with the previous murders, would go on to inspire the Amityville Horror Book and Movies. 